Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about and figure out how we can determine if two triangles are congruent. We are going to have to use our five different uh, methods to prove if two triangles are congruent. If you remember back to that foldable we talked about, SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS, and HL. So you are going to need your foldable, something to write with, and maybe a calculator. So here, let's try a couple examples comparing triangles and seeing if they are congruent. If we look at this first set of triangles over here, we have two triangles. It looks like I have one set of congruent sides, so that would be an S. And then the next thing I see would be this congruent angle, so that I would write A. And the last thing I see is the last sides that are congruent, so SAS. The reason A is in the middle is because the angle that is included is between the two congruent sides. So it looks like I have an SAS congruency here. Is SAS one of the congruency statements that are congruent? Yes, it is. So here, these two triangles can be proven congruent. So if we look at our next set of triangles, here the first thing I see is a congruent angle on both of my triangles. The next thing I see would be a congruent side. And the third thing I see is another congruent set of angles. So it looks like I have ASA, and the reason that the side is between because the two angles are on the outside of the side. The side is included between the two angles, so I would have ASA. Again, thinking on if ASA is a congruence postulate, we can assume that yes, it is a congruence postulate because that's what our notes tell us. So those two triangles would be congruent. Now for our third example, the first thing I see is a congruent angle. Congruent angle here, so I have A. Next thing I would see would be a side. And the last thing I see is another side. So if I were to write in that last S, we'd get a bad word. So that automatically should tell me that I'm going to not be congruent. So these are not congruent because I would get a bad word if I finished that out or if I wrote it the other way around, it'd be SSA. And lastly here, it looks like I have isosceles triangles, but I have a set of congruent sides there, so that's an S. I have another set of congruent sides, another S, and a third set of congruent sides, so S. And SS, SSS is one of the postulates that proves congruency, so therefore those two triangles would be congruent. So let's try some more examples here. Let's try this fifth example we have. Again, we notice we have a set of congruent angles. So we'll start by writing an A. I see another set of congruent angles, so I'll write another A. And I see a third set of congruent angles, so I'll write another A. So when I look at my notes at AAA, does AAA, is that a postulate that proves two triangles congruent? It looks like it does not, so these two triangles would not be congruent. Okay, example six then, again I see congruent set of angles, so I write an A. Next thing I see is a congruent pair of sides, and the last thing I see is another set of congruent angles. So ASA is what we would have here, and does ASA prove two triangles congruent? It does. It is a postulate that does prove two triangles congruent. Okay, next one, let's look here down at number seven. I see a two set of sides congruent to each other. I see angles that are congruent, a set of angles congruent to each other, and I see another set of sides congruent. Now, how do I know that the angle is between the sides? Because if you look at your picture, the angle between the two sides is the included angle, therefore I have SAS. And we've already determined that SAS does help to prove congruency. So these two triangles would be congruent. And then lastly, in our eighth example here, first thing I see is I have a set of sides congruent to each other. I see another set of sides congruent to each other. And I see a set of angles and concluded, a set of angles congruent to each other. Now notice here, if I were to put that A out front, we would have a bad word. And we know if we have a bad word that they would be not congruent. So these two triangles in this last example would not be congruent. 
So in this example, we need to determine if the triangles are congruent. If they are, we're gonna write a congruency statement. So looking at our picture here, they tell us that we already have two angles congruent, and we also have two sides are congruent. So now is there anything in the picture that we can also figure out by just how the picture looks? Any other angles we know are congruent, any other sides we automatically know are congruent, I hope we notice that these angles in here are congruent because they are vertical angles. So now if I look around here, it looks like I have a set of angles congruent. I all have another set of angles congruent and I have a side congruent. I know that the S is not between the angles because the sides that are congruent aren't between my angles. So I know that I have AAS. So if I look back to that other foldable we have, AAS, does AAS prove congruency? It does, so the triangles are congruent. That means I need to write a congruency statement. So triangle, we can label the first triangle however we want. I'm gonna start with R. So triangle RST is congruent to triangle. Now I gotta be careful. R is the angle congruent to U. So the first angle I have to have is U. Then I put R, which has two arches, so the V would come next, and T would be the last one. So this would be my congruency statement due to the fact that the two triangles are congruent. So let's try another example here. Let's determine if the two triangles are congruent, and if they are, we're going to write a congruency statement. So it looks like I have a set of sides congruent and I have another set of sides congruent. So I already have two sides congruent. Are there any other pieces of information I can pull from this picture that I already know? Well, similarly to our last example, we have vertical angles again. So I do have that those two angles are congruent. So now with that marking on my diagram, it looks like I have side, angle, side, because that angle is between the two sides that are congruent. So since I have side, angle, side, we know that side, angle, side does prove congruency. So these two triangles would be congruent. So I'm gonna start with the top triangle. I'm just gonna label it ABC because the first order does not matter. But after I have that first order, my second order does matter. Now, how do I figure out which angle is congruent to angle A? Well, it looks like angle A is the one that touches the side with one slash marks my other triangle. Angle E is the one angle that touches the side with one slash mark. So it looks like A is congruent to E. So then B would be the one that has no slash marks. The next one that leads me to no slash mark would be D. And lastly, it would be C, because C is the one that we do have markings on in our triangle. So this would be my congruency statement. And I know they're congruent because of the postulate SAS, that angle is between the two congruent sides. In our third example, again, we have to determine if the triangles are congruent. And if they are, we're again going to write that congruency statement. So looking here, it looks like I already have a side, set of sides congruent, and I already have an angle congruent. Now again, is there any other pieces of information I can pull from this diagram? Okay, looking at the two triangles I see, I see triangle ABD and DBC. Okay, so is there anything that I can pull out of this picture? Well, it looks like they share the segment BD. So BD, since it's shared by both, must be congruent to itself. So here, if I look at triangle ABD, it looks like I have side, angle, side again. We just determined that side, angle, side does prove congruency. Therefore, I need to write my congruency statement. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle, since A is over here, and it touches the one slash mark. Again, it's going to be congruent to angle C. So it's going to be C, B, D, because the D's look the same and the B's are the same. So therefore, A should come first and C should come first, likewise with B coming second. Our last example we have of this is to determine if the triangles are congruent. Again, we need to write a congruency statement. So here it looks like they only give me that I have one set of congruent sides. So is there any other pieces of information we can pull? Well, looks like we have a set of vertical angles. Is there anything else I can pull from my picture? I don't have any other congruent sides, and it doesn't look like I can determine any other congruent angles. Therefore, there's no other pieces of information. So right now, I just have a side, 
and an angle. We don't have any of our postulates that have a side and an angle that prove congruency. So this would be not enough information, not enough info. So we can't prove congruency. We don't know if they're congruent or not. So some practice we can do quick before you get onto your worksheet. Let's indicate the additional information needed to enable us to apply the specific congruence postulate label. So here we have two triangles. In order to use ASA, since A is in the, or since S is in the middle, that means I would have to have the side between the two angles. So in order for us to use ASA, we would have to include the side. So the only angles that would include the side that is labeled are ready for us would be the angles B and D. So in order for ASA, we'd have to show that angle B is congruent to angle D. Therefore, that side would be between those two angles and we would have ASA. That would allow ASA. Okay, now if we're talking about SAS, remember SAS, the angle must be between the two sides. So here we have a side and we have an angle. So the only two sides that include that angle would be BC and AC. So for the, in order for us to use SAS, we would have to show that AC is congruent to FE. Okay, and lastly, we have AAS. So AAS means the side is going to be outside of the two angles. So where is the only place that I can put an angle for us to use AAS? If I put it at B here, that means the side would be between the two angles, which is not what we want. So it looks like I would have to use the angles A and F for this to be outside and not include the angle that they give us is congruent. Now it looks a little confusing with all my markings. Hopefully you followed along, but here's how we would prove it for three different situations. Okay, so as I go, follow the color of my markings. So here's another example. Indicate the information needed in order for us to apply the specific congruency postulate stated. So here's what I would like you to do for this one. Since this video is getting a little long, I'm gonna have you do these three in your notes. I will check these when I see you in class, but have them done for class to prove that you are understanding what's going on. We will revisit these topics, but in order to get credit for your video, you must have them attempted. Thanks for taking good notes. I will see you when I see you.